Hello and welcome to this instruction for the Integrated Process Modeling Technique or IPM. It's a very simple process modeling technique that integrates the process flow and activities, actors who are involved in the processes, their responsibilities, the tools that are used, as well as process inputs and outputs. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is kind of the first layer if you will, of the process modeling technique. And it's very simple. It's a simple process flow where you have some starting point and then the dark arrows here, thick arrows, represent the flow of the process. And then each box that you see here is an activity or a task, part of the process. And you can see it flows from one to the other. And then over here is a, a dashed flow line and that is a conditional flow line and notice the condition is labeled right here further clarification is needed and by the way this is just a, a sample process flow don't really expect it to make perfect sense in a real world situation it's just for demonstration purposes and so the first part or layer of the uh, integration, integrated process modeling technique is the process flow that we're looking at right here. And then the second layer involves the actors, those who are involved, the roles that are involved in the given activities. So in this case we have a requirements representative involved with the initiate user stories task or activity and the, the line between them, uh, between the, the role and the activity represents the responsibility of that actor. So um, present and refine the requirements would, would be involved there or the user stories. And then we have a test writer lead or the leader's designate who is going to comprehend and maybe refine those definitions of the user story. And so basically you can just follow through very easily seeing who's involved and in what way they're involved. Now the next layer shows pretty much the same thing except now we have some tools added and we see here uh, there's a software package called target process as well as a telephone conferencing. So uh, maybe this is uh, a distributed team and they're not working in a co-located situation so they're teleconferencing and discussing things over the phone maybe looking at the target process and the the line uh, really can be drawn from the tool uh, either to the role or uh, probably better to actually tie it right to the line representing the responsibility and so you can see these tools here are just added to the process to give a little better idea of you know what the actors are going to be using to accomplish their responsibilities in the given activities. And here we have the final layer and we'll con we see pretty much the same thing that we've been looking at but we also see some inputs and outputs down here at the bottom area. So we see in this case it's a picture of a brain so uh, customer requirements coming from the mind of the customer uh, could be documentation too. This is just an example here. And the fact that the arrow points into the activity shows that it's an input and an arrow coming out is an output. In this case it's showing the sync, uh, the location where that output is going to be stored and it actually labels the output in this case, refined user stories. And so here we have an example of a, a notification email that's an output of this activity right here. And so we can see that this uh, test writer lead or designate assigns test writers in this activity and the output is an email notification that lets the test writer know that they have that particular assignment. So there you have it. It's a very simple process modeling technique. You've got the process, the process flows, you've got the actors, the tools they're using, and your inputs and outputs. And so this can be used either to design a system, it can be used to model an existing process if you're looking to improve a process, it can be used to help uh, testers 
and quality assurance uh, uh, department members to understand a system so they can decide how to test it. It really has uh, many uses. And you can drill down another thing that's not shown on this diagram. Let's say that this box right here were shown as a 3D box. Well, that would indicate that there's another diagram similar to this that represents uh, this particular activity broken out into its individual steps. So a 3D box. And so there you have it, the Integrated Process Modeling Technique, or IPM. And you can use a tool such as Visio. This was done in PowerPoint. Uh, Visio is a, no doubt a better tool. You can create a, st a stencil to make it very quick and easy to put these diagrams together. So I hope you find it useful. My name is Scott Daggett, and thank you very much for watching the presentation.